Hey Simmers, it's Erin, I'm the Rescue Simmer, and you are watching the next episode of the Hunty Fundy Baby Challenge, a challenge in The Sims 4. We take the 100 Baby Challenge to Weird Culty Fundy Church. Guys, do I have a lot to catch you up on? <laughs> oh my goodness, we had a stream with uh, beautiful Rose here, who is <laughs> stank facing. Let's just call it out right now. Holding Limestone back from vacation. It was a very eventful vacation. So as you guys know from last episode, Rose was recycle bin bent. On proselytizing to Greg, of course that went about like we thought it would. Rose got back from the beating that uh, they received. A very frothy sim. Rose's parents decided to have everyone who could fast and pray. Mom actually ended up taking the kids home because they didn't know if what Rose had was catching uh, and they wouldn't have really been able to fast anyway. The children were too young, Beth was too pregnant. So dad and Topaz stayed. Topaz threw his fasting while Rose was raging out in her private trailer, felt led by the watcher or really the watcher happened upon him reading some werewolf lore. So I think that's very interesting. Also, Rose was terrifying. Actually, Rose was not Rose anymore. Rose, the sim form, is female. And while there are some frustrations with that, that can be explained by social pressures, Quartz is actually Rose's werewolf form. And Quartz is not female. Quartz is male, very securely. There is no questioning it. There is no maybe Rose felt differently. There, Rose was not there. Rose Quartz still exists when they're in werewolf form, but Quartz is very soundly he, him. And Rose has to deal with that. Not only the fact that Rose is now a werewolf, <laughs> Rose isn't even a female werewolf. So if there were any questions about the way that Rose was feeling now, those are not not good. Also, the Watcher laid it upon Rose's heart that Rose should be married very soon. <laughs> now, I won't do this often, but this time it actually is is the Watcher uh, through a chance card. Look at Rose, <laughs> dreaming of the moon. Rose cannot deny themselves anymore. Rose wants to be a werewolf initiate. I think Rose is getting the idea that perhaps Rose can lead werewolves to the Watcher through her example about how to tame their beast, especially since Rose's beast is male and Rose doesn't know how she feels about that. She can't deny though that Quartz felt pretty good while he was in beast form. And so Rose is taking this to me in prayer. And I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna entertain this bottle your beast mentality that Rose has come to. That's my position. So Rose wants to experience a full moon and Rose wants to read werewolf books. I wonder who in her family has access to those. Oh wait, look, werewolf books that some very studious Sim who loves researching, especially in The Watcher, took home. Also guys, last little bit that we will spend on pause, I promise, but this is just kind of perfect. Uh, so Rose actually has a couple of quirks. Rose is an anti-capitalist canine, actually Quartz is, but Quartz is an undeniable part of Rose. Ever since the beast awakened, doubts about societal norms have begun to stir. Now the Sim rejects the daily grind and will gain extra fury if forced to partake in this endless crushing rat race. Now that sticks pretty well with how Rose was expected to spend their life. Rose was not expected to ever get a job outside the home. So I don't imagine that fundamentalist life will be very hard on Rose or Quartz in that way. However, Rose has survival instincts now. These Sims, seem to have an extra sense for danger. Anxiety much? I think so. Gaining additional fury when scared or tense and try extra hard to keep themselves physically safe. So because of things like thunderstorms or the stress of feeling like they have to get hitched within seven days, Rose is going to gain more fury. The higher the fury is, the closer Rose is to wolfing out. So right now, I think the Josephs are fairly, I wouldn't say proud of themselves, but relieved that their fasting seems to have worked. Whatever this was seems to have gone away in Rose and Rose does not have to be afflicted with the curse of the beast. Rose is just gonna try to, <laughs> try their best really, to 
continue on with life, but Rose cannot ignore this call that is in them. I think Rose is going to talk with their parents about feeling a call almost like a missionary to these lost souls. So for right this minute, everything is all calm and fine on the home front. They're falling back into a very familiar routine. Beth is like so pregnant. Beth is absolutely pregnant. We have all the question marks. We're waiting for mom to give birth. Rose is so used to this. Oh no. <laughs> and playing with the babies. Absolutely. Definitely a Beth thing. And it's comforting. Sir, I'm going to have you repair that. Thank you. Mom is really enjoying herself. All of her babies are under the same roof. Rose is an adult. Now Rose could move on. Rose will be looking to court. Um, and I think, I think Beth wants to make sure that everything is okay. Beth is actually really happy that Rose feels a pressure to hello. Uh, Rose feels a pressure to feel or to get, uh, get hitched. It is Belle. Belle has had quite a few of her own babies. Oh, look it. <laughs> Garnet is making some crafts. Guys, Garnet's stuff is up so, so high. We have, you know what? <gasps> Before I forget, you guys, we have somebody to age up, actually. Tonight is a new moon, but it is also Limestone's birthday. Very, very excited to welcome this little one into childhood. Limestone has been pretty much amazing, you guys. He's level five on most things. Thinking and movement aren't as high, but oh my goodness, he's level four on those even. Oh, look, everybody is saying hi. Oh my goodness, celebrating. This is our heir apparent. He just aged up. Limestone was clingy. He is now, oh, he's a horse lover. Aw, what a bummer because Danny took his horse already. Uh, he, while they were gone, Danny came and took the horse. Thank goodness, nothing else. Of course, all of our kids get the child of the watcher aspiration because they want what their parents want at this point. What is this? He wants to play marbles. Oh, baby. So look at this. Limestone is mental level two, motor level two, social level two, creativity level two. Oh, he's been sent some gifts from people he's not allowed to, uh, to talk to. That's cool. That's great. And look at this guy. He knows how smart he is. Let's get some candles back on this cake, pop it back in the fridge for the next age up, and then let's get in to create a sim and give this boy a makeover. So limestone is this very like sandy, beiges, khakis, uh, that kind of thing. Gotta confess, not the most exciting palette. I think I will allow some oranges in there as well. This is actually not a terrible swatch. As far as the modesty standards go anyway, let's see what our styled looks have because I'm pretty sure there's a horse ranch one. Oh my, <laughs> that could be limestone. It is becoming winter. It's changing from fall to winter. So I like this for an every day. This is a cute church outfit or like formal outfit. Let's change those pants a little bit for you. I know I normally do this off screen y'all, but I think you know, we got some stuff to talk about. So we have a little horse loving Sim and our horse, as you can see, is gone. Danny did come with permission to get his horse. It was Danny's horse. And although he has been disowned verily by the male of this household by James, who honestly felt like he didn't have another choice, he was allowed to come and get what was his. Now, mom went home early, so I would imagine that mom was overseeing this, and I don't think Dan Barite would have been so bold as to seal something in front of his mother. Dan Barite has another baby. Well, he has one baby and then another on the way with poor Fern. Oh my gosh, what cute little pajamas. Just right for a horsey lovin' Chestnut Ridge boy. Yeah, Danny Wham Bam Thank You Mammed her as soon as they got moved into a permanent home, and then he is off gallivanting in Salvadorada. Poor Fern is trying her best to live up to the impossible standards of a fundy wife. I am certain that Fern is trying her best to be supportive because she believes that this is what the Watcher wants of her and her husband, but at the same time feels very guilty uh, for wanting more from her marriage and her husband. Wild ideas, I know. I just feel so bad for Fern. I really do. Pregnant without her marriage partner there. 
having this little infant that she has to take care of all by herself in a new place with nothing but the money that Danny sends home. Now, I am aware that I have been gabbing about Danny through Limestone's entire makeover, which is not fair. So let's talk a little bit about Limestone and what I see for this young man. I think that this youngin was raised with the expectations that he would be taking on the mantle of the family, that he would have the honor of carrying on the name. Pressure? Absolutely. Does he have imposter syndrome? I think it's possible. We'll have to see how he develops. But with his just older brother looking to take up the cloth, the pressure is on for this little dude. By now, his parents are absolute pros at raising kids. And so he's gotten the benefit of having them make a bunch of mistakes. So he practically knows quite a lot of skills as a toddler, especially with the idea that he's going to be taking on the family. Now mama is pregnant. So we will see if she holds a little boy in her belly. I will bet this little one is hoping not. Regardless though, it is late. So everyone's gonna, (laughs) we're gonna send our guest home. Uh, It looks like Ulysses, which is Luna's father, Luna is the young lady who is infatuated with Fundy Life, has come over to introduce himself to Rose's parents. Rose is already met Ulysses. Ulysses came from a Fundy family, has absolutely no interest in taking his family down that path, but knows that Rose has turned. And Ulysses is happily married and much older than Rose. He's not creepy. Um, So it's none of that. But Ulysses knows that just because Quartz is no longer here, that we're not in that form, does not mean that Rose is no longer a werewolf. He knows what went through their brains. He was raised this way and he was so worried about Rose. He imagines his own daughter being put in this position. And the reason is because they're discussing the possibility of Rose leaving. And the more that James and Beth are hearing, oh, they just did a secret handshake. That's super cute. Uh, As much as they want to be protective of their daughter, they heard all the roaring and the commotion in that trailer. They saw glimpses of what their little baby morphed into and they don't know that they like it or can handle it they don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna frame this to the other kids they're feeling like at this point especially with Ulysses background this may be an answer to prayer Ulysses knows what they would be concerned with so Ulysses is saying hey I have an in with all of the young men here Um, and they're really not talking about the fact that Rose is quartz when They're transformed. Oh, he just gave her uh, the book that he was reading. He's like, hey, sis, I think you could use this more than I can. He's also got a couple of more books for her. Um, And, you know, this is hard for all the siblings, but what mom and dad says goes. And they feel good about Ulysses. Well, not good. They feel like this is their only choice. Rose at this point would have, Rose is an honest sim. Rose has raised to be an honest sim. And Rose, especially to her parents, would have been honest to a fault. So Rose would have told them about things that she was, quote, struggling with as Quartz and feeling no connection to her female sim body. And this is concerning to them, but uh, Ulysses is offering a house where he knows the values that they have and has promised to help Rose uphold them. And you know what? Ulysses only has a daughter. So they don't have to worry about Rose being uh, Rose being tempted with, you know, undue woohoo pressure. Uh, Rose really shouldn't be thinking about that unless they are courting anyway. And Ulysses has said that, they, that he will run any male sim by them. Ulysses knows what he is doing. He is very afraid for this young person that he sees, I think, a lot of his daughter in, not getting ushered into this really tender time in their life correctly and in a healthy way. 
And I think that he knows better than anyone else that the Fundies are not equipped to do this. And that whatever Rose's spiritual leanings, Rose has to come out whole. And that Quartz has to be part of that. So I think he's holding some things back. I think he is telling them just enough of the right things to impress upon them that, that listen, this needs to happen. Uh, you will never not have access to your daughter. And we understand that Rose's authority is you. Uh -huh. Never mind that Quartz's authority isn't for anyone. <laughs> that's the part that's not being said out loud. And thank goodness. I think Rose is scared. I think Rose is scared of her werewolf. And I think that if mom and dad say that this is the best option, then that's what Rose is has been set up to trust. And so Rose is going to go live with the days in Moonwood Mill. And we will catch back up with Rose this next weekend, this Saturday at 7 p.m. Dad has already given Rose a hug and kiss. Mama is doing the same. Mom is telling Rose to give her new sibling a hug and kiss that they will write. And oh my gosh, you guys, this is so sad. I think that Beth feels helpless and so does James. I think that they feel like they love their children wildly, but they don't understand a one of them except the ones that stay. And gosh, they have to be questioning at this point. They have to be. There's just no way around it. It's been a long night. Rose has had a chance to say goodbye to the family. This is fairly friendly terms, but there's less argument about this because... They saw, they saw what, what Rose was or what Rose has become. They do see Rose's heart is still for the watcher. And so they are very encouraged by that. But Rose has to leave and it, it really does have to be tonight. Oh, dad is telling him to take care of his baby. Um, and, you know, Ulysses is from dad to dad. I cannot imagine that Ulysses would would have any ill intent. He's going to do the very best for Rose that he would for Luna. So let's pause it here and let's get our Rose Quartz on over to Moonwood Mill. Rose is staying with the Days, the host family. Yes, the Joseph's know that they are former, well, that Ulysses is a former fundy, but they feel encouraged by Luna's interests. They really were impressed by that girl. Hopefully Rose can influence Miss Stella for the best and somehow win wears over for the Watcher. They don't know how it'll happen, but they trust the Watcher implicitly. And now you guys, with one less, yes, you should get going, with one less, is this my front door? Is this set as my front door? No, it's my back door. Why? Okay, I'm so confused. Anyway, <laughs> guys, let's go into build mode because I got to show you something. We now have three available slots. And if we go to the lot traits panel, I don't know. It was a wild stream. Weird stuff happens. I put on the ley line on. I don't know. Like weird stuff happens in stream. Also, she has the fertile trait. I don't, I don't want triplets, like not even a little. However, it wouldn't be a Hundy Fundy Baby Challenge if we didn't have at least one group of them. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to have triplets. So please, y'all pray for me in the comments. <laughs> I will, I will be up in this, in this place crying. If we do end up getting triplets that will have, can you, excuse me, repair that. Thank you. Y'all, I am gonna have him put out this fire hazard uh, go fix this toilet he broke and then go to sleep i will be with y'all if we if we have babies and if not i will see you in the morning you guys it is 7 a.m and although we have a very hungry studious young lad doing his homework we don't have a baby i am pretty sure that this is day five of our matriarchs pregnancy like I'm at a loss let's get some leftovers for you my dude you guys we don't have any babies infants or toddlers in this house for like a second that is outstanding I'm going to enjoy this because I it I'm probably gonna have at least twins now um I don't know why I just did this oh <gasps> no uh, why why okay 
Looks like everybody is waking up. So, and starving. Everybody is waking up and so, so hungry. Oh, he wants to give of himself. Topaz, I love you so much. You're so sweet. You are gonna make the best pasta, sir. We're just gonna get up, get ourselves ready and get on with our day. Let's use the bathroom. We're gonna take a shower and then we're gonna get out and do some chores. Now it is Saturday, so we don't have overly much to do. So I think really what's gonna happen, I wonder how long we have till everybody ages up. Our next birthday isn't until a week today and it's Garnet's birthday. We may age up Garnet a, a wee bit early, I don't know. Uh, and then it would be Limestone's birthday, interesting. And oh my goodness, we have so long until this young man ages up. I do wanna wait until next episode to age him up because I want to give him his own live stream. This man is going to Fundy College, you guys. I am so excited for Topaz. Topaz is going to Fundy College. I know that one of you has been such an advocate for all these kids, all these children to get some higher education. And this is the guy, this is happening. I'm so, I'm so happy. Once upon a time, thought this was gonna be our heir, but I am so glad that he's gonna have his own stuff. What a studious young man. Good job, Limestone. I will tell you, mom is sleeping very, very late into the day. She didn't get to bed till almost three in the morning. So it's it's not quite the same uh, for her. Dad, what's your story? Oh, dad is so, so hungry. Do we have enough to get you leftovers? Oh, we do. Amazing. That's great. You want to donate to charity? That's very nice. How about you pay your bills? Because I am sure, sir. Oh, no, we just have to get mail. That's all. Ooh, mom is up, guys. We are on baby watch. He is sad for lost Sims. Just thinking about all the Sims who are lost, not following the will of the Watcher can really make you sad, especially if they happen to be family. Oh, baby. This is because of the Fundy mod. Uh, this It's so deep, like especially for a Sim like Topaz, who is looking to be a member of the cloth. You know, like that's important for him. That is something that he would worry about. Absolutely would worry about. Now for his college, I'm not gonna send him to Brychester or Foxbury. Um, I think we're actually going to have a lot that we send him to along with some of the other young men from the Fundy community uh, and maybe some we haven't met before. Uh, that will be, will serve kind of as the Fundy College. We'll maybe have some faculty there uh, and we will meet uh, some of the staff, uh, some of, well, if they're females, they can't be staff. Uh, they they will be serving, but they're not staff. But some of the young ladies that will have be, been sent to serve, maybe in admissions, you know, who knows um, where that is. Yes, get us our money, sir. Thank you, very much appreciate that. Let's spray the area for bugs. Um, hopefully, hopefully he can get this done. I, ugh, I don't know. Let's just see. Let's see if he can be useful today. Oh, Miss Beth. Uh, Beth has gotten her shower. She is just cleaning. She is waiting. She is waiting for these babies. Y'all, we are on baby watch. I just, I can't. I can't do this. Meanwhile, the kiddos are being kiddos. They are just playing some marbles. I'm so happy for them. He wanted to do that anyway. He wants to level up in his horsework. <gasps> we're in labor. Oh my gosh, we're in labor. Y'all, ooh, I need to know. I need to know what you guys are thinking. I'm going to be bringing up your, uh, ooh, today's mail has been delivered. We have bills. Amazing. All right, we'll get one of the men to pay those. But y'all, <laughs> I'm gonna be bringing up your names that you suggested uh, from last episode. We're gonna see. We are gonna see what we need to do. What we need to name these babies. Mom needs no help. She's done this countless times before. I actually don't remember how many pregnancies she's had. Is this eight or seven? I, I don't know. Ooh, you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. Beth is having a baby. Okay, maybe it will be a miracle and just one baby. Uh, is this baby 11 or is this up to baby 13? I would like your guesses down below. Ooh, 
it's a baby girl. Okay, I really like the idea of a ruby. We haven't had ruby yet. Ooh, that's how it's spelled. Okay, thank you, Sherelle May 6752 for your lovely suggestion. Oh no, <laughs> for your lovely suggestion. Uh, I think for this one, I'm going to use a name that I've had for a while, specifically because I like the color. I'm going to name the baby Citrine so we get a nice, beautiful yellow. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's two girls. We still have limestone as our heir so far. Oh, I'm so excited. And his want to have a baby is clear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and you know what? That means that we're getting limestone a horse. This little boy wants a horse. He is a little horse man. We're gonna do this. We're gonna level up his riding skill. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. Mom is just getting some bonding time with her babies. We are going to age them up like right away, you guys. Oh my goodness. I know, he's so happy to have these babies. I will say he is genuinely in love with all of his children. Like for wanting a baby, he wants them all. Like he's, he's enthusiastically a father about all of them. Okay, so Ruby aged up. She is a cautious infant. Oh my goodness. Makes sense for how she would be raised. Oh, and she's a blondie. Oh, that's so cute. She got a smile milestone unlocked. I think dad is aging up our second little one. All right, Emerald, let's see. I'm sorry, Citrine. <laughs> I'm going to do that so often. Uh, Citrine aged up. Citrine is also cautious twins in every sense of the word. Fraternal twins, obviously, because Citrine got the, aw, got the brown hair. Let's take these young ladies into cast and give them their unfortunate funny makeovers. Oh my goodness, Ruby looks adorable. Adorable, you guys. How cute. All the Joseph's kids look so beautiful. Um, every single one of them in their own way. They they make some really pretty babies. Mm, that's blue. I'll keep her with her little side pony. Okay, so is Ruby in not a dress? Yes. Have I found a loophole? Yes. Has it taken me 40 episodes to figure this out? You betcha. Uh, leggings leggings and we're fine. I did not realize that you could layer leggings under this. So we get to break up a little bit of the monotony. I am so excited. Let's put her in uh, something a little bit more ruby like for her church clothes. I will tell you what, this is gonna broaden so many things. Nice ruby PJs. Let's take a look at your party wear. I'll do the thing I normally do. It's pretty much just the same as their formal wear. Let's get you out of the socks. That's a weird choice. And these little paw boots are so cute, but um, cannot stand, cannot stand. Not in the Fundy household, sorry about that, babe. So for your hot weather wear, we're really not gonna see this because of the time of year it is, so we don't really have to stress all that much. I'm not even gonna bother putting the leotards on. They they just look so warm, very, very warm uh, to me, and I, I just don't wanna do that to our little Ruby. And we're gonna get you to head to toe in like a little parka. I absolutely love this. So here is little Ruby Joseph. I think she and Garnet are going to have quite a lot in common. Citrine. Citrine is a nice, beautiful stone. I think Citrine of the two babies right now uh, looks so pretty, but they're babies, so who cares? They're both adorable. Oh, this is so cute. Her sister has a little dog on her jumper and Citrine has a cat. I wonder if maybe we could, uh, we could work with that a little bit and get them both dogs and cats as they age. Who knows, there's a whole lot of growing and rolling that we have to do, <laughs> to be very honest with you, before we even get close to something like that. I could go with this blue and yellow with the clouds, or, oh, this is like more white, but it is under the yellow swatch and it's more solid, so I think that they would go with that. Get her in some nice leotards. Nice, bright yellow PJs. Hot weather wear is gonna be the same as everyday wear, just without those little leotards. Again, we're not going to see this, so I don't need to stress super much about keeping it like within fundy guidelines. Ooh, and does this come in yellow? It comes in kind of a white. 
Oh yeah, yellow, perfect, there we go. Now I'm wondering about this hair. <laughs> I wonder if we could do like the little two pigtails. We could do the same as what her sister has. It even comes in yellow, that's so cute. Or we could do, oh, that's adorable. Okay, Citrine, simply for the bow, that's what you're, that's what you're getting, my dear. Ruby, I am actually changing her hair to this one because the little hair ties are white and not pink. But yeah, guys, here is Ruby Joseph and here is Citrine Joseph. You guys, this has been an eventful episode. Let me know what horse or what horse type we should get for limestone who is still our heir dad is donating to an online charity right now <laughs> mom is gonna go put one of the babies down we'll probably do some tummy time with the other actually we'll do it with both of them i don't know why i thought yay <laughs> he's so happy and he absolutely he, did, he wants to volunteer with his family he wants to enthuse about the outdoors mom wants to help mentor a child homework and she just wants to talk to somebody that's not related to her right now <laughs> So she is, um, she's, she's being a good sport about it. She was submissive to her husband. They have two more babies. Guys, they have 12 kids now. They have 12 children. The two of them are responsible for putting 12 humans or 12 Sims on this earth. Can you believe it? Limestone is going to ask or tell his dad a horse joke. And I think that they're thinking about what kind of horse they want to get him. Guys, tell me in, hello, Jasper. Tell me in the comments what kind of horse we should be getting limestone. I feel like I don't want to rescue a horse because they all come with like really difficult personality traits. And I just think limestone deserves better. This isn't Dan. Oh, that's so cute. This isn't Danny after all. He's not evil. Uh, so... It, let me know what you think would be a really good horse for a young child. Oh, babies, what's wrong? We're fussing. Not the favorite. Oh, no. We're going to have our older siblings all oh, try to make them feel better. Uh, they're just going to go ahead and try to play peekaboo. Uh, maybe mom and dad are going to get them. Yeah, they could be good jokesters together. So, y'all, I'm just going to leave this family with their new babies. Please join me on Saturday for our second stream with Rose Quartz. This will be a proper where is she now. Uh, and we're going to see if we can get her hitched um, and how her faith looks now that she is a werewolf. For now, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you the next time I stream or post. Watch her bless. And y'all, happy simming.